Hey, here it is, April 3rd, and it's snowing. I, uh, glad I got that lathe inside. My goodness, it would be, uh, not a lot of fun. <laughs> I, oh, man. One thing after another here. Let's see what I got going here, all locked up. Find the key. Oh, there's one. All right. That's it. <laughs> well, the heater's on. It's working. All right. Well, I did a little test cut. And I'm holding a couple of ten thousandths on that distance, about three inches. And uh, that's pretty good. I got the tool um, moved over a bit, you know, to avoid the most worn part. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount a small four-jaw chuck in here, hold stuff there, and uh, find the sweet spots on the machine. And so far, it's all pretty good. This uh, interesting tool uh, holder here is a, a gift from Will the Blade. It's a, a KDK adjustable. This is old time stuff here. This uh, California tool post for a California weight, huh? <laughs> the old KDK. I was told that uh, this particular one, I don't know if you can see that tag, it says patent applied for at the bottom, but the serial number on this is number 14. And uh, here's a newer one here, and it's still ancient. And the serial number on it is 2,990. So they made, or, or even more maybe. So they made uh, thousands of these things. But this one here is the 14th one made. And I was told that this one uh, was specifically made for an axis, and I don't know if that's true or not. But they have the bolt mounted way forward. You can see this one, the bolts in the middle, that causes this thing to project out uh, too much. And that's one reason why I didn't really like KDK. But, I, but, I, uh, but that's okay, you know, for a lot of stuff. But for uh, most of the time, I think this is the best one for the machine because it, you know, brings the, the tool back. These things are heavy duty. They, uh, they weigh uh, at least 11 pounds for this uh, Series 200. So that's what I'm up to. I, I got to get the plates back on here so I can see what speeds I'm on and the feeds and stuff. And uh, since this thing was uh, outside, I got to, uh, to clean everything before I, you know, use the gear in train. So it, it's a little bit noisy, but. Uh, it's good. And uh, I will be back with uh, more. Lots more. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, it's the next morning, and uh, there's still snow outside. Hey, um, there's um, a plant uh, over in the Tri-Cities um, near Hanford there that uh, centers metal, which is an interesting process. For the, push together uh, powdered metals and make parts and cook them. And uh, he said, uh, we went over there um, as a class from the community college here. This was, man, more than 30 years ago. And the owner was quite old, and I'm sure he's still not around now, but he uh, made the comment that uh, metal is like rubber, but just harder. And it's really true. And uh, this old lathe here, this Axelson, has been on a skid for a couple of years. And uh, what happens, and I've run into this before, the lathes actually get bent a little bit. 
But uh, the machine, the metal wants to go back to normal, you know, the way it was made. But you kind of got to just let it do it. And, uh, and for example, um, the uh, base screws on this side are just bare or not contacting or barely contacting and the base screws on on the wall side are and uh, i'm watching the level here and uh, it's um you can see that it's still high on on this side and the screws are really tight uh, fully taken uh, the weight of the headstock of the machine on the wall side here. So th this side is just barely contacting and uh, this side is uh, taking all the weight. So the lathe is bent or twisted this way. Okay, the headstock's twisted a little bit this way. So What's going to happen, and it's happening, is um, um, it's sinking. <laughs> it's, it's going on its own um, to where it should be. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. And uh, I learned this trick from uh, a tricky guy, an old tricky guy named Clarence that... Uh, it, um, showed me quite a few things. Now, one of the things that can happen, too, when the lathe gets bent, is uh, there's two parts to it, or actually three on, on this one. There's the base and the, and the entire top of the machine. So I'm going to let the machine straighten itself out, but there's uh, eight bolts. And... Uh, here they are here on the tail end. So that hold the top of the machine to the base or the bases on this one. So as this thing gets uh, close to true, I'm going to go around and I'm going to crack those eight bolts and then retorque them down and uh, then, then watch the level. And that'll, because uh, when the machine gets bent, it can stress where it's bolted and stay and a little bit of stress stay in there and uh, it can make it difficult to uh, level or, or have the machine like it should be now uh, i'll go ahead and mention this it's the same on the jig boring machine but maybe even worse um the top get around over here you see the top here the top column is bolted to the base here. So these things, these jig bores can get out of whack too. And uh, you need to crack the, if you move them or they're not sitting where they're supposed to for a long time, you need to get start getting them level, then likely crack all those uh, column bolts loose and retorque them. Get any stress or anything that's uh, in that interface out. I thought I'd mention that because it comes in handy in other things if you think about it. If you got warp or things have gotten out of whack. Okay, I'm going to uh, get down on my uh, hands and knees <laughs> and keep leveling the slave a little bit. I got a little, a lot of little things to do, but as, as it warms up um, in here, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be good. I uh, leveled it first with these little levels and um, before I get the um, master level on there. And then I turned the piece here. It's about three inches long. It's only it's held in a three jaw. And it's only a few tenths of taper. And, and it's larger on the end as usual. And that's really good. So I got a four, when I get this level and keep dinking with the machine, I'm going to uh, put the, hold the piece uh, in this uh, four jaw. It's more rigid. And uh, spin it up and, and uh, you know, find the sweet pot spots on this uh, machine. Okay, I'll be back in a bit.
next year called Spray and Kill Me Newsmakers and newsbreakers. Here it first on the Brian Kill Me Okay, back here, uh, leveling the lathe here. Um, I talked about uh, the base bolts here t um, to the top of the machine. There's four of them. And I've cracked, uh, one of these was loose and one was real tight. So what I, what I want to do is crack them loose and relieve any bolted in stress. Anything that's... Uh, incurred into that. So I'm going to loosen them and uh, tighten them and then keep leveling the lathe and likely do it again to um, the head here and the tail. Between is just a sheet metal um, coolant tray. So this one back here, of course, uh, under the clutch actuator and it's tight so I gotta dig it out and I shorten this socket half inch uh, to uh, half inch drive to half inch uh, See if I can get that in there. Yeah, I think I can. Yeah, there we go. Let's see how tight this one is. Not not real tight. Yeah, that's that's okay. Let's see if I can get it out. Okay, I gotta get that one back there. And uh I'll, I'll crack it loose. And that's the last one for here. Then I'll I'll, I'll do the tailstock. Okay. Okay, well, I got the lathe leveled for now. Leveled good enough, but I expect it to change. Um, so I'm, I'm going to uh, let this thing warm up a little bit. It's still cool. You know, it's outside in the 30s. So it's still kind of warming up, and I think that'll affect the uh, level a little bit too. Now I've got it leveled uh, really good this way and pretty good this way. For right now, this direction uh, for twist is the most important, but I'll end up leveling it, um, level all directions because uh, it's nice to be able to you know, stick stuff in a four jaw chuck if you have to and uh, use a level to uh, get a surface square if you need to. <laughs> I kind of find that with repair work. So, got got those uh, loosened and retorqued the same. And uh, I did that the old school way. And, and I'll tell you about that. Now, in old manuals and, and some, um, you know, vehicles and stuff like that, they don't give torque values. That's because the mechanics then use the correct tool. So this is a half inch uh, uh, breaker bar here, an old time snap on. And I'm going to get those about as tight as I can with that. 
and I won't be over tightening them. And I can judge the torque real good because uh, when it starts hurting your hand, you know you're done. <laughs> That's how it was. <coughs> You know, and uh, regular wrenches. Let me see if I can find one here. Oh, come on here. Oh, yeah, look at this old SK wrench, a 5 eighths. You would be hard pressed. Of course, there's Hercules people that could do it. <laughs> uh, snap off a fastener of that size. So if the wrench starts hurting your hand, you know you're there. Okay, now I, I'm going to change the oil, and uh, I got a, uh, a, a really tough 8-inch uh, steel body chuck on here. And uh, I'm going to, you know, keep doing some test cuts, running the lathe, and, and, and stuff like that will be very good for it. And I'll be back with that. Okay, have a good day.